Hey, it's Jeremy from OpticHouse.com. So here I am going back and I am fixing some mistakes I made on this page. As you can see on the left, there's a comic page and there's Lucifer's hands shushing the face of a man whose face is all in shadow. Now, when I envisioned this page, I really imagined it looking backlit both he and Lucifer. However, when I ended up executing this page and, you know, in its finality, it looks more to me like the guy is in blackface. It just did not have the effect that I wanted. So I had to sit down and rethink the lighting scheme. And as you all know, thumbnail, thumbnail, thumbnail. I'm always going back and I'm re-thumbnailing stuff. And you can see even as I'm drawing here in blue pencil, I went back and I printed out, these are the same blue lines that I inked the original page over. I printed them out on just a small 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock to ink on, you know, so you can still see the uh, the panel borders from the rest of the page. The one area that I'm redrawing, I only just redraw this one panel, not the whole page. Oh, yeah, scooting it over so you can see. I was actually pretty happy with the way Lucifer's face came out, just not the... Um, the guy that's tied up. So I went back and there's a small thumbnail that you can see. The sheet of paper that's sitting on top of the comic page, the very bottom left, you can see how Lucifer's face is all in shadow. That's the, the bottom left hand sketch. His face is all in shadow. However, the guy who's tied up, now you can see that there's sort of like a strong rim light. So it still gives the effect of him being backlit, but without the really distracting shadows on the front of his face that didn't read well. You know, and sometimes that just happens. You sit down and you think you know what you're going to do lighting-wise. You draw it out, and you take it all the way to execution, and it just doesn't look good. I mean, ideally, you would catch these things in progress and find the solutions before you get to the end, but sometimes you need to complete a piece before you realize what's wrong with it. And I don't get upset. You know, we make mistakes. You, I honestly feel like, again, I learn way more from my mistakes than the, from the things I do right. So when I try something and it doesn't work, I'm like, all right, let me just figure out the answer. Now, once I did that thumbnail that's on the, uh, the scrap pa piece of paper, I was much happier with the lighting scheme. Once I knew I, I was, you know, had a lighting that I was pretty well happy with, then I was like, all right, let me just go back in and ink it. And this time, again... I'm focusing much more on inking the shadows of the page before I go in there with the smaller brush and doing the details. Only now, at this point, am I going in and doing the fine line work. You know, but for the most part, the real strength of the page was building up the strong shadow along the nose and on the outside of the cheek to really give you that sense of, you know, that... He's heavily shadowed. His face is shadowed from the front, but there's the strong light coming from the back. So, you know, it's kind of like classic movie lighting that I was going for. And, uh, yeah, I, I was pretty happy with the, the changes I made to it. Although, oddly enough, I think I was happier with Lucifer's face in the first one I did. And I gotta tell you, I drew this so long ago, because this is issue 5 of Morningstar. I can't remember whether I ended up photoshopping in and keeping the face from the first drawing, Lucifer's face from the first drawing, and the guy's new face from the second drawing. Sometimes I do that. I'll go in there in Photoshop and just, you know, chop it up and take whatever parts I need in order to get the, the effect I want. But yeah, you know, just so, making a little art patch, and, you know, in the olden days, I would cut this out and glue it to the artboard, but in this case, I can just cut it out in Photoshop and then add it to the page. From there... We move on to a page pretty late in issue five. And this is sort of a continuation of a topic I was talking about in the last video in terms of uh, trying to use stronger silhouettes and really trying to define the shadow sides of form. You know, it ties into what I was just showing you again with the rim lighting. But strong silhouettes really help make a page stand out and, you know, have it be distinct. Whether the characters are in profile, whether you're looking at them from the front, you know, that strong silhouette, it can convey a lot of action, a lot of storytelling. And I think that's something, 
I mean, the place I remember seeing it first was in Will Eisner's comics and sequential storytelling. But, you know, a lot of comic artists, and, I, you know, I definitely pretty sure that the same idea also turns up in How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. You know, a lot of books about visual storytelling. In fact, almost any book I can think of on storytelling or storyboarding talks about the importance of a strong silhouette. And I don't think that it's necessarily something that I'm strong at doing, strong at drawing. And again, this is what I feel like the big advantage of working on your own creator own project is, is you can use the story as a chance to work on things you want to get better at. I find myself putting in a lot more pages where I've got crowd seeds and and silhouettes that need to be strongly defined. And I'm doing it not because I'm good at them, but because I want the practice. So I'm literally using the this whole thing in Morningstar, I'm using to get better at things that I don't usually consider myself particularly, particularly good at drawing. Um, you know, horses, for instance, pretty difficult. And yeah, I've mentioned this stuff before. The point is, is that sometimes being afraid of screwing up can really encumber your creative process. It doesn't mean you should be careless with what you're doing, but there's something to be said for being courageous, for having the guts to try something that you may not be able to pull off or something you're pretty sure you won't pull off well and saying, you know what, let me try one or two shots at this and maybe I'll come up with one that isn't great but better than I would have done before. And it might give you the courage or the encouragement to try those things and push further and continue to, uh, to grow your skills. Because, you know, if you just do what you know how to do over and over again, you're never going to grow. You're really going to stagnate as a creative person. And you have to think about the fact that considering how hard making comics is, you should really have some sort of personal investment in it beyond just saying, like, even if you have a gig that you're getting paid money for, you should still be able to say, well, what am I going to get out of this for me as a person? Is this going to push me as an artist? Is this going to push me as a writer? Is there something about this that's going to be fulfilling to me creatively? And one of the other things I like is like little working little pieces of emotional storytelling here. Like I've got two characters that aren't even main characters in the story. The, this girl is the little girl from the beginning of the whole series that was, you know, part of the storytelling about where the demons came from. And now she's here with her father witnessing this guy getting the crap beat out of him. And, you know, the whole public town is watching him being humiliated. And, you know, just, just a little moment of humanity with her, you know, tucking her face into her father's chest and him realizing he should not be letting her see this and trying to shield her from these kind of horrors. You know, I like putting in little moments even if they're not with the main character, that gives a little bit of humanity to them. Humanity to them. That's it for now. Check out my website, OpticHouse.com. If you enjoy these videos, please share them. Also, sign up for my weekly newsletter to get a free digital download and see what else I'm working on. Go be creative.